As we end our liturgical year and sort of spiritually conceptualize uh, the kingship of Christ, three images seem to surface. In our first reading from the book of Samuel, the image of kingship is uh, that of David. As we all know, he was a shepherd boy. No? And clearly, the proclamation tells us that even when he was king, they looked at him as a shepherd. No? In our second reading from Paul's letter to the Col Colossians, the image of uh, a king is seen from the perspective of sovereignty. Yes, it may seem as power, but we have a sovereign king whose kingship proclaims peace. Now in our gospel, deeply we are able to understand the whole point of the mission of Jesus and his kingship is that of a suffering servant. You could just picture this gospel text as something that can help us understand a different kingship that the world dictates. The world would talk about a kingship of power, almightiness, telling us that those who are kings, if they have all the resources, can preach what they want, even worldliness and perhaps even sinfulness. But then we have the Lord here as suffering servant king. And what did he want to emphasize? And here perhaps we could have a more practical perspective, looking at kingship from the vantage point of shepherding, sovereignty, and suffering servanthood. First, what values of the kingship of Jesus? First is humility. Um, one would try to fathom how the Lord would humble himself and be obedient up to the cross. It's like when you try to picture it, was he obliged to do it? But he wanted to dramatize a point to us, but in person, in reality. He humbled himself on the cross and really suffered being mocked and jeered at. Why? Because when he was looking perhaps at the people around him when he was crucified, he was face to face with arrogance, with people who wanted to insult the innocent, who wanted to oppress. And there he was, even though he was so powerful, he could have eradicated them from the face of the earth, but in the words of even Paul's letter to the Philippians, the Greek word is kenosis, he emptied himself. And that emptying is not only of being God, but up to obedience to the cross. How difficult it is to be humble, even in our own personal lives and in our relationships, isn't it? Especially when we are hurt. It is so easy to hurt back, to show arrogance, to do some kind of vengeance, even in silence. There are people who articulate it physically with abuse. But the Lord tells us what matters is humility and that truly converted hearts and that should convert hearts even during this time. The second value is compassion. Why did Christ suffer on the cross? 
And I think it is because he wanted to make us realize that he was not a God up there as if just looking at those who were suffering. But in the word compassion, two Latin terms, cum, which means with, and pasio, pati, to suffer, he wanted to show us that we have a God who suffers with. You know, at a time when people can just be indifferent, yung bang walang pakialam, yung pwede nalang baliwalain yung mga nahihirapan, yung mga hikahos, Here we have Jesus suffering on the cross, a suffering servant, and telling us, You are not alone. Think about your own suffering. It may not only be physical, it can also be emotional. It can also be spiritual. And the Lord is telling you, just when you think, You are alone. I am here. I am suffering with you. I am showing my compassion. Because if you think you are the only one suffering, I am suffering too even now. What happened more than 2,000 years ago is happening now. Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, when we hear the words, This is my body. This is my blood. We have the Lord showing His compassionate love to each of us in a very personal way. And third, what is His kingship telling us? Forgiveness. That story was not only about Him hanging on the cross. What did we hear? There was this thief, and he said to the other thief that they were not clean. Why can the other thief demand for his being God? And the forgiven thief simply asked, Remember me when you are in paradise. And the gift of forgiveness was granted when Jesus was suffering and dying on the cross. I will not only remember you, you will be with me. Think about the deepest hurt in your life and how difficult it is to forgive. It may be something you cannot forgive in your It could be sa a hurt that was inflicted by a loved one, a betrayal. It could be done by someone you even do not know and until now, You find it hard to forgive. But then look at Jesus. Though not mentioned in our gospel, but we always hear it on Good Friday, the first word that came from His mouth, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Nagpatawad ang Panginoon. I'd like to think this is how the Lord wants us not only to see His kingship, but to live His kingship. And that's the whole point as we end the liturgical year to move to another new liturgical year. Can you become humble? Can you become compassionate? Can you become forgiving? The questions is thrown at each of us. The Lord is waiting for an active response. And if truly we will respond to Him, let us respond concretely and with commitment. And let us respond with deep love. 
Amen.